welcome everybody. Thanks for coming to see the talk. So I'm uh, Max Lebowski, co-founder of Formlabs. And uh, Formlabs is a company that makes a high-resolution desktop 3D printer. Um, so just last week, we launched our first complete redesign of the machine called the Form 2. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, and about, uh, I think, in general, uh, some thoughts about the future of 3D printing. So uh, before we get to the future, we've got to talk a little bit about the past. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, where Formlabs has come from and also where the, the industry has come from. So we got started, uh, sort of, we, we, we came onto the scene about three years ago, almost three years ago to the day, actually, when we launched our uh, Kickstarter campaign to uh, launch the Form 1. And the Form 1 was the first desktop stereolithography machine. And uh, the, other, the other main concept we were pushing, making a desktop 3D printer that was easy to use and had sort of professional quality output. So this was a, a obviously a really big, exciting moment for us. We had a super successful campaign. In 30 days, we raised $3 million in pre-orders. So we went from basically 10 people in a room with you know, nobody in the world had any idea what we were doing to, uh, to having significant sales and, and presence in the 3D printing world. Um, but it only took a couple of days into this before we realized that, that the real big challenge was ahead, was figuring out how to ship this thing and really building out the complete system because it was more than just uh, putting together a Kickstarter campaign. So uh, that's one thing we've been focused on from the beginning is the idea that 3D printing is about more than just a machine. You need a complete end-to-end -end system because what you really want out is, is a part. Uh, you, want, you want to put in your model and get a part out, and that's more than just a uh, machine. So we've always built the software that drives the machine. We have a system called Preform and also the materials that go in it. And building all these things together to work well together is, is part of delivering the dream. So since the Kickstarter launch, we, we shipped the Form 1 and we made a number of improvements to the system. We, we shipped the Form 1 Plus where we took everything we learned with the first few thousand Form 1s that we shipped and, uh, and redesigned it for, uh, re re improved a lot of components for greater reliability and print speed. Form 1 Plus is now, as far as we can tell, the best selling stereolithography machine of all time. So on the software side, we made uh, huge improvements. So a lot of the technology actually lives in Preform, the, the desktop software, which has the ability to take a model in and, uh, and set it up for printing. And normally that's done in a big expensive software package like Materialize or something like that, and there's a trained technician using it. Our challenge has been how to automate a lot of those algorithms. And so here we show some improvements through the support structure generation where we've uh, made, we released this in the beginning of 2015. We made them dramatically more uh, material efficient, which also improves print time also released a new uh, draft mode 200 micron print setting which makes the Form 1 Plus in addition to the highest resolution desktop printer also the fastest desktop printer. Uh, so on the material side, materials are a huge part of stereolithography. You can't just take some off the shelf uh, materials and put them in the machine. The, machine. the materials have to be designed to work with the, very, with the specific process that you're using with the type of imaging system. All these things need to go in. So when we first shipped the Form 1, we had one base resin clear. Uh, we've expanded that to four of the base resins, four colors, clear, gray, white, and black. And over the last year, we've uh, introduced three new functional resins. And these are pretty interesting. Uh, so we have tough, flexible, and castable. And these make the Form 1 Plus really one of the most capable desktop systems. Uh, so we, we can now work in uh, jewelry and, and dental applications and things like that. Now let's look at uh, some stats of where, where Formlabs sort of is today. So we're about four years old, and uh, in that time, we've accomplished a few things. Today we ship to about 30 countries around the world. Uh, we have about 120 employees, um, but what about our customers? So uh, one thing I'm, we're, we're pretty excited to announce is that our customers have printed over a million parts at least to the best of our estimates. Uh, and on the on customer satisfaction side, our customer support team is getting 95% customer satisfaction rating. So the customer support team is something that we didn't realize would be an important part of what we do, but today is really a big strength. So what are people doing with the machine? 
so just a few, few interesting examples from different fields. This is uh, from a company called Sutru, um, and uh, there's a guy named Alex Berry who maybe is here in the audience uh, who's, who's been working on this. It's an automatic suturing device, and they're uh, printing these really high resolution detailed parts that you need to prototype a medical device like this, and they're able to do it on a desktop uh, and do multiple iterations in a day rather than one iteration taking two weeks to go to an external service bureau and thousands of dollars. This is uh, uh, from uh, an artist in Austria who makes these, uh, his name is Klaus Leitel, and he makes these models for museums. This one's over a meter long, printed from nine parts, uh, finished and painted. Pretty impressive work. Next thing is an uh, entire stop motion animated short made by a French artist named Gilles Deschaud. And he, he printed all of these on, uh, on two, two form ones, over 2,500 parts. Spent almost a year doing it. Pretty impressive work. And it, it's shown at the Cannes Film Festival. The last one here is um, from a jeweler in San Francisco. And she has uh, this process where you can come into the jewelry store and get your fingerprint scanned. And then that, that fingerprint will be uh, applied to the surface of the ring. And because they have a Form 1 Plus, they can do this in the store quickly and cheaply. Uh, and so you can get this personalized jewelry out. Um, so what do all these things have in common, uh, all those examples? I, I think what's interesting about them, I, everybody here has seen examples of these types of applications for 3D printing before. But what's unique about those is these were all individual, small businesses, um, doing things that they couldn't do before and that even with the higher end printers really weren't accessible to them. But once you bring this kind of professional high quality technology to a wider range of people, you get all kinds of new creativity coming out. What does this mean for, for where 3D printing is going in general? I think uh, you know, if we sort of uh, review a little bit of the history of 3D printing, I, there's, I think there's kind of a trend, a trend going on here. So. <clears throat> A lot of the stuff I'm talking about, many of you have been actually involved in for far longer than I have. So this is me like coming in as uh, somewhat of a, a newer observer. But um, these are my, my thoughts. So 3D printing has been around now for about 30 years. And uh, in the beginning, uh, there was a lot of great work from people like Scott Crump and Carl Decker and Chuck Hull, who actually invented all the processes that, that we use today. There's a core set of processes that make up 95% of the machines sold today, and they were all developed in sort of the 80s and early 90s. And this first phase uh, was really about the, the challenge of putting together these computer-controlled machines, complex machines with a lot of different process control, and figuring out these processes. And so the machines came out to be very expensive, difficult to use uh, piece of technology, but they also pushed the capabilities quite far. And so they, these were very impressive um, pieces of technology. And this is also the phase where sort of most of the current applications for 3D printing were developed. Uh, but the real full potential, I don't think, could be realized because most creators did not have access to these machines. So uh, now about 10 years ago, so it's amazing it's been that long, um, people started to build desktop 3D printers. There was a couple of... Uh, open source projects like RepRap and Fab at Home, where people started to take a look at these first generation machines and say, hey, why couldn't you make a sort of desktop accessible version of them? And that was a, a really, I think, a really important moment, even though it, it took a long time before these machines started to, to make it to, to be commercially relevant in 3D printing. This was the, the moment where people started to think, hey, what, what happens if 3D printing goes out to 10, 100, 1,000 times more people than it has today. <clears throat> it was also the moment where uh, I think a lot of the current generation of uh, 3D printing innovators sort of started to pay attention, and including us at, at Forum Labs. Uh, so the, the problem, though, with this phase is the machines were more about using the machine or designing a new machine rather than what it did for you. And ultimately, the value of 3D printing is what it does for you, not, not the act of using it. So, so what should come next? Um, and you know, when we look at what, what we started to see with, with Form 1 Plus, and we look at these first two phases, 
for us, the kind of uh, obvious question is, why, why can't you have both? Why can't you have the capabilities and, and performance of the first generation machines, but in a desktop form factor at an affordable price, and most importantly, easy enough to use that somebody who's got a 3D model can come up to the machine and be printing quickly. So that's what we've been, uh, that's what we've been thinking about. And, um, and last week, uh, we, we released the world, our, our version of what that next uh, phase should be. And so I'm going to show you a little video uh, to introduce it. We took the world's best-selling SLA 3D printer and made it even better. Introducing the Form 2. Powered by a precision optical engine, the Form 2 creates laser-sharp prints with beautiful detail. With a larger build volume and smarter technology, the Form 2 is designed for performance. Now you can create perfect prototypes right on your desktop. We've redesigned the way we print. A new peel mechanism, a wiper, and a heated resin tank work together so you can print parts not possible on other machines. An integrated resin system adds materials automatically. With wireless connectivity, sending prints to your machine is simple. The Form 2 is built for collaboration. You can monitor progress, receive notifications, or easily share your printer with your team. Engineered for precision, designed for reliability. The Form 2, the most advanced desktop 3D printer ever created. That's the Form 2. So there, there's a lot, a lot of new stuff in it, and I think everything we put in it sort of is following along this theme of trying to combine combine the, the, the best of the, of the first two phases of 3D printing. So we sort of uh, tried to bring together a lot of things that are usually not found in the same machine in 3D printing. You usually have to compromise. So we've got a lot of advanced technology in there, but in a really simple experience. We've increased the build volume, so it's, it can do large prints and incredible detail. This is especially uh, uncommon with desktop 3D printers, where you either have larger FDM machines or really tiny DLP stereolithography machines. And ultimately, you know, summing it all up, it's professional quality and affordable price. That's, that's what we're aiming for here. So uh, yeah, we've, we've increased the, the build volume from the Form 1 Plus by, by 42% substantially larger build volume. For us, the more important thing is, is to address sort of the, the hidden truth about 3D printing, especially desktop 3D printing, which is that machines are not reliable. Ultimately, everything we, when we talk about with ease of use and, uh, and sort of simple experience, it, the biggest, biggest part of that is reliability. If you have to come up to your machine after it's been printing for eight hours and find out the part failed, have to restart it and change some settings, that, that destroys the whole experience. So most of the new technology we've, we've put in is about addressing reliability. And, and the, the other interesting thing about uh, the, the new technology we're bringing in here is that I think this is the first time that uh, in desktop 3D printing that we're actually driving forward some of the core process technology development. So up until now, Everybody in desktop 3D printing has been sort of trying to replicate the, the processes found in higher-end machines and slowly adding in uh, all of the controls and things like that that are found in the high-end machines. Um, but here we're actually developing new, new processes and capabilities that are specifically important for a desktop machine. First of all, the optical engine. Um, this is where we have a pretty exciting new piece of vertical integration where we're actually building the, the galvanometers that go in the Form 2. And uh, this is something that it's a, the, the galvanometers are the motors that actually steer the laser, a really specialized component. Um, and most people buy them from a, a number of few specialty suppliers. But we found ourselves as possibly the largest consumer of galvanometers in the world and stuck between choosing 
between very high-end galvanometers that cost as much as our machine costs or galvanometers meant for laser light shows. Uh, and we needed the performance and accuracy of those higher-end ones, but nobody could make it at the price that would work for us, so, so we're now building them ourselves. We also increased the power of the laser and sealed the, the optical engine for reliability. Uh, then on the, on the actual print process, there's been a, a number of changes. So we're using a different uh, peel mechanism, a slide action here uh, that from what we use in the Form 1, which works much better for larger parts. And then there's also that wiper, which Im improves reliability by allowing the machine to rec recover from microscopic failures that usually turn into catastrophic failures and also improve the, the fine feature of detail. And then on, on the ease of use side, one of the biggest changes we have is a cartridge system. And uh, this, uh, this allows a printer to run uh, for longer, for larger prints without being refilled. Also means that you don't have to handle the resin directly. Uh, and there's also some pretty interesting technology in here where we're able to do this without making, without requiring uh, anything inside of the tank. So the tanks can still be low cost and disposable and there's nothing you have to insert into the tank or anything like that. All the sensing for the system is done externally from that. So that was actually a pretty big piece of technology development. And then uh, uh, sort of on the usability front, if you look at what it looks like to share a higher end printer today, this is a picture from one of our uh, customer's offices. Then uh, this, is, this is the queue waiting to use the machine. You just stick post-it notes onto it. Uh, and, you know, that works, but uh, this is what it looks like to, to have a queue on a Form 2. Um, so that's, that's the Form 2. That's what's new there. Uh, as I said before, it's, it's about a complete system, not just the machine. So we have a lot of improvements in preform, new cartridge system, new, new finishing kit. When we look at sort of what we have here, we think that this is, this is the first step into that next phase of 3D printing. I think a lot, there's going to be a lot more people joining in into the next, this next phase. Um, and uh, you know, when, when we started with Kickstarter and with the Form 1, it was kind of an experiment. Uh, we didn't know what people were going to make of this. We had a lot of early success and support. And we're, we're pretty excited to be taking this next step. I hope uh, everybody here can, can join us with that. Thank you.